With the 4680 batteries, Tesla is making a strategic move of de-risking from China. And to be clear, I do not believe that China is the only reason why Tesla decided to make in-house batteries, but the way in which Tesla has been going about it just so happens to circumvent all three pillars of Chinese control on the battery supply chain, and the evidence for this has been coming together recently. So hello YouTube, I'm Michael Size, and there are three critical choke points which make the entire global battery supply supply chain dependent on China. And those are the nickel cathode powder production, but not nickel mining, lithium refining, but not lithium mining, and graphite mining, as well as graphite refining. But before we talk about this in detail, I think we should actually take a step back and start with a broader view of how batteries are manufactured. On the one hand you have LFP batteries, which are a type of lithium ion battery with a primarily iron cathode. In this segment China dominates and Chinese companies control everything up and down the supply chain with no competition. While the technology was initially developed in the USA, it was actually indigenous Chinese companies that brought this chemistry to where it is today. And on the other hand, we have nickel batteries, another type of lithium ion batteries, but this time with a primarily nickel cathode, and this segment is dominated by companies from Japan and Korea. As for how the chemistry is compared to each other, well, nickel batteries have superior energy density, but inferior longevity and slightly higher prices. Now for all of these batteries, the anode is made of graphite, and when it comes to assembling them, the lithium is first mixed into the cathode powder, then the cathode powder is spread onto aluminum foil, the anode powder is spread onto copper foil, the two foils are brought together with a separator, which is made of plastic, and the whole thing is stuffed into a steel or aluminum can. Obviously anyone can make the steel can easily, and everyone can make the copper and aluminum foils, and while making the plastic separator isn't trivial, because making plastic isn't trivial, my understanding is that this plastic is still nothing spectacular. So what remains as the most complicated components are the cathode powder, the anode powder, and the lithium, which are exactly the three components that must pass through China within the current supply chains. And now that you understand this structure, let's take a look at what Tesla is doing in order to de-risk these components, starting with a cathode powder. We know that Tesla has a cathode factory in their Texas location, and this building definitely manufactures the cathode powder, and I believe that it's also responsible for the calendaring step as well. And Tesla talked about this at Battery Day, and their stated reason for building a cathode factory was that for the nickel cathode in particular, they had a process which was significantly less complicated than the industry standard. And honestly, this is a fair explanation. I mean, if it was just the cathode factory, I wouldn't have any suspicions at all, but now consider their lithium refinery. This one is something that nobody has been able to explain until now, at least as far as I'm aware, because Tesla's reasoning on this is just confusing. All of the industry experts are of the opinion that lithium mining is going to be the bottleneck, so everyone expected Tesla to get into lithium mining, but Tesla built a lithium refinery instead, and Elon was saying that lithium is everywhere and refining is the bottleneck, and this was particularly weird, because he kept insisting on the line that lithium is everywhere, which, I mean, it's accurate, lithium is everywhere, but that isn't the issue. Issue. The issue is that it takes 7 years to bring a mine to production, while it only takes about 2 years to bring a refinery to production. And even when these discussions were taking place, for the most part the consensus was that refinery capacity was sufficient and it was actually mining capacity that was the bottleneck. But now listen to Elon's argument within the context of China de-risking. Lithium is everywhere, which could mean that many countries are mining it and even more are going to join, but refineries are only in China. 
If this is their true motivation, then obviously this is not something that they could state publicly. So instead we get the weird lithium is everywhere line. And honestly to me this was always suspicious. I mean, even if you look at the body language and the tone of Elon when he's saying it, it's pretty obvious that he knows he's giving a nonsense answer. I just never was able to figure out what the real answer might be, but now I finally have a theory that I'm satisfied with. But even with this theory, I wasn't completely sold on the China de-risking argument because of the graphite. However, the graphite question was recently answered as well, tying this whole hypothesis together. See, when it comes to graphite, you have two options. You can get natural graphite, which comes from a mine, or you can get synthetic graphite, which is manufactured. And generally, synthetic graphite is slightly higher quality than the natural graphite, but at the same time, it's also usually higher cost and higher embodied carbon emissions. And for this reason, almost all batteries are made with natural graphite. At battery day, Tesla did not talk about their graphite at all, which had everyone thinking that their graphite was nothing special and therefore they were just going to use natural graphite. And yet when the 4680s were analyzed, the researchers found synthetic graphite inside. And to understand what this means in the context of China de-risking, well, the supply chain for this graphite probably looks something like this. It starts with oil that has been extracted in Texas, it goes to a refinery in Texas which produces pet coke as a byproduct, and the pet coke then gets turned into synthetic graphite in Texas, and from there it goes to Tesla's battery factory, which is located in Texas. So if this is anywhere near accurate, you can see that China is completely cut out. Now if this is true, there is also an argument to be made that perhaps Tesla's graphite actually is cheaper and cleaner than Chinese natural graphite, because doing everything in Texas, you're cutting down the shipping distance and processing it with energy from Texas should mean way lower carbon emissions than the coal energy that is used in China. But if this was the case, if their graphite was cheaper and cleaner, then why did Tesla not mention it at battery day. I mean, not only did they not mention it, they're basically trying to keep it a secret. So all of this considered, I struggle to see any advantage to this synthetic graphite other than de-risking from China. So at this point we have the unexplained synthetic graphite, the unexplained lithium refinery, and we also have the cathode factory, and between them, these circumvent all three pillars of China's battery monopoly. So it's awfully convenient that it all worked out like this, even if they weren't trying, but if this doesn't convince you, there's actually one more argument to make here. And the final question is why Texas? I mean, certainly you would want to have everything in one place, but why is that place Texas and not China? When comparing the advantages, the current supply chain goes something like this. You mine the lithium in Australia, you refine it in China, you add it to cathode in Japan, you add the cathode to batteries in Nevada, and you manufacture the car in Texas. And this is a lot of unnecessary shipping, and obviously this is something we don't want. What we would prefer is that the materials go from the mine to one unified location, and they stay there until the final product is shipped. But why does that location have to be Texas? Because the natural choice would actually be China. See, when it comes to manufacturing, China has systemic manufacturing subsidies, which means that whenever you manufacture something in China at all, you're always going to benefit from indirect subsidies, and the more subsequent manufacturing steps that you put in China, the more you benefit. And this is how China became the world's factory. So under regular circumstances, what you would expect to see is that all the materials go from the mine to China, where they process the chemicals, and make the cells and put the cells into packs and then you ship the packs to Texas where you put them in the car. And certainly this is one additional shipping step, but that shouldn't be anywhere near enough cost to offset the benefits of manufacturing in China. So once again, why Texas? 
You may say that it's all because of the IRA subsidies which Tesla receives for manufacturing in America. But actually, Tesla's strategy was put in place way before the IRA was even discussed. In reality, Tesla is not the only company that's pursuing China de-risking, nor is the USA the only government that's pursuing it. But in this particular case, it seems that the government has actually been following the lead of its own companies and not the other way around. So at this point, I can't see any reason for putting everything in Texas other than a China de-risking strategy. So assuming that this is the case, why is Tesla pursuing de-risking in the first place? I'm actually not going to give my answer in this video, but I want to address a few answers that I believe are wrong. With the most popular one being about China stealing Tesla's technology, because I don't think that this is the case at all. Recently some people have been obsessing over the Giga castings, but this particular item is actually indigenous Chinese technology, which Tesla bought from a Chinese company. And when it comes to the fundamentals of the vehicle, in general, Chinese EVs are lower quality at the same cost and they simply build their business models in a way that tries to get around this fact. And even in the general case, technology theft doesn't really work like how most people understand it to work anyway. When Tesla first built its factory in China, it uniquely received the authorization to build a 100% self-owned factory and Tesla insisted on this clause for years because it's necessary in order to prevent the classical technology theft strategy. Certainly Tesla is going to produce talent by running its operations in China and other competitors are going to be able to poach its former employees. But Chinese companies poach employees across borders like this all the time, so this isn't an issue. It really is the joint venture structure which facilitates the technology theft and Tesla prevented this. So if this isn't the issue, then what is? Many companies have many reasons to worry about China, but with Tesla in particular, I believe that China explicitly, though covertly, halted Tesla's factory expansion. And additionally, I believe that China will come to regret this decision. But I'll talk about that theory in a future video. For now, thank you for watching and in order to see the next video, make sure to like and subscribe. And make sure to let me know what you think about my current conspiracy theory in the comments. I read all your comments. But we, we, we really see very little activity outside of China for, for lithium refining. So, um, and so uh, we've just broken ground on a lithium refinery in Corpus Christi, uh, which will be um, doing more lithium refining than I think probably everything uh, outside of China. Yeah, and, and in that case, there just isn't really any large-scale cathode production in the United States, and it needed to be done. And, and I think something that's, qu that's really qu quite noteworthy here is Tesla is the only foreign manufacturer to have a 100% owned factory in China. So this is often uh, uh, not well understood or, or not appreciated, but to have uh, the, the only 100% owned uh, foreign, uh, you know, foreign factory in China is, is a really big deal.